What do you think that these executives are afraid you're going to do to white America? Um, probably uh, stop some racism. Stop racism? Yeah. They're probably afraid of that because then people, people don't hate each other and people start talking to each other and then they start talking to each other they find out <clears throat> who's the problem. Which is? Uh, greedy people. Greedy people. I, I have a couple things I want to ask you there. Do you, do you really think that some of the guys that you dealt with at yeah. NBC, no, no names, right? Because right. there's lawsuits for that too. That some of these guys really want to promote racism actively or is it a subconscious? I, I just think it's part of capitalism is to promote racism, you know, right? In order to uh, make things work. If you feel better because you're white and you can get a job, uh, you use that. I mean, you know, I would. Absolutely. So, I'm sorry, Jack, but shit, they say I'm white, I'm gonna use yeah, this. Right, absolutely. Get this job, I'm hungry, you know. But, uh, and that separates people. So they keep people separated, and that keeps them from thinking about the real problem. That's, that's as simple as I see it. Probably it's not that simple, but. Now, all right, you and I are I, about the same age, right? We're in our mid-30s. How long is it gonna take before guys who think like you, and I say guys who think like me, people who don't want to have racism in the country, people who don't want to be oppressing any minority, whatever it is, sexual, whatever minority, really get into positions of power and can change things. You can't get in a position of power, it seems, if you think like that. It seems that the only time you get in a position of power is if you like the people that are in power. To me, I mean, that's the way it goes. I mean, people that get to become executives become like the people that were already executives. I don't know, maybe... They go in with good intentions, but it eats them up. It's like a cesspool, you know, it just gets on you and it starts the system eating. levels up. Pretty soon it's Is all gone. Is that what a cesspool sounds like? Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll be back right after this. Okay. But life is not all that. There's religion in life. Go to church, get your spirit back. Because Jesus saves. I don't know who. Couldn't save his own ass. <laughs> no, he was a nice person, according to the history books. I get chills when I talk about him, but I got you. That's some kind of weird shit. I wouldn't get crucified. Because knowing what people are like, motherfucker couldn't crucify me. Say, yeah, bro, it's probably a motherfucker guy. <laughs> I'm gonna step it on off a couple more blocks. <laughs> you imagine getting crucified, motherfucker sticking a nail in your hand? Shit. It's either genius or bed bug time. <laughs> Did you let a motherfucker stick some nails in your hand, bro? No, I know. <laughs> Shit. And he was a carpenter too. He made uh, crucifixes. <laughs> he didn't help them other motherfuckers he made the crucifix for. <laughs> but he dropped some dirty shit on the motherfucker when they did him in, right? He said, Forgive him, Father. They know not what they do. <laughs> That'll hold them motherfuckers. <laughs> fuck with that one. <laughs> Religion fucked a lot of people up. Talking about the motherfucking God we trust is on a dollar. That's the only dude they talking about. Y'all talking about, ooh, go to church with no money and don't, don't you feel bad? <laughs> well, I don't have nothing to put in. Everybody in church know it. You didn't even put nothing in the collection. <laughs> Kiss my ass. I'm shitting it. <laughs> Y'all want some shit? You give me shit. Here's some more. <laughs> no, but church be happy. The Catholic church is hip because they got a gimmick. That freaky water. You know, you can freak off and be cool and be Catholic. I guess. <laughs> Thomas signs of spirit. Yeah. So I remember the Salvation Army had all the virgins. You remember? I'm saving myself for the Lord. <laughs> and you could tell they were virgin, right? Because everything's drawn up. <laughs> I envisioned right somebody to meet some hippie. Hi there, I'm the Lord. <laughs> and in the Midwest, they oh God, the hillbillies, you hear them on the radio Sunday morning? You turn on the radio. Out there, friends and neighbors, as God fucks you, could done. 
Well, if he hasn't cut you, you send us a dollar eighty-five cents, and we'll send you absolutely free a touch from God. Uh, and they always have some woman confessor, right? You know. I was lost and alone. I had nowhere to go and nothing to do. God found me. Now I have plenty to do and nowhere to go. <laughs> I went to white Protestant church for a while, you know, but it scared me, man. The music, they had some weird music going. Ooh. Ooh. I expected Dracula to come jumping out any second. You know. If he did, I'd have held up the cross. Because he's allergic to bullshit. <laughs> Black preachers know God personally. Where you go to him? You know! I first met God in 1929. <laughs> Outside a little hotel in Baltimore. I was walking down the street eating a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> That's right, 1929, you eat anything you could get. And I heard this voice call unto me. And the voice had power and majesty. And the voice said, Psst. And I walked up to the voice and I said, what? And the voice got magnificent and holy and resounded. Uh, and the voice said, give me some of that sandwich. <laughs> well, ever since that day, I've been able to heal. Because I didn't get up off the sandwich. So if you God, make your own goddamn sandwich. I ain't mess with you, don't mess with me. It's rough out here, God. <laughs> Why those new guys? They all knew Jesus Christ, right? Every wine. I never, you know, Je Jesus Christ? Shit, live over there in the project. <laughs> Run the elevator down to Jefferson Hotel, man. Nigga ain't shit. <laughs> knew his mama. In fact, my mama saved his mama life up there in the third floor apartment of Taft Home. Didn't get a nickel for it. <laughs> That's right, cause she was carrying that boy. Knew it was a boy, cause she was carrying it low. And she told her husband, Joe, God made the baby. He damn near killed her with a cue stick up there. I don't go to church. God don't live in church. They say the body is the temple. I'm walking in church right now. <laughs> Soon as you go to church, there's somebody trying to stick a dick in you and they need some money. in humanity's history has been over some kind of motherfucking religion. You know what I mean? I don't get caught up in that bullshit because I don't think God ever wrote a Bible or a Quran. He didn't have to write no shit. He ain't no playwright. It's written in your essence. Because the Bible is written by me in the book of Peter, the book of John, the whole book about Jesus, but that nigga ain't wrote one book. The motherfucker that is about didn't write shit. All the hangouts throw the book. Shit, I know the nigga, nigga. <laughs> and you notice in each one of them book, they the closest one to Jesus. Peter like, shit, me and Jesus was tight, nigga. In John's book, shit, I was damn near the nigga daddy, you know. <laughs> God didn't write no book. It's written in your essence. Nobody ever had to tell you it's wrong to kill your mama. Somehow you born innately knowing that. Which means you born knowing right and wrong, so put the book down, because it will fuck you up. You understand me? <laughs> it starts out messed up in the beginning, in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, there was Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And Cain and Abel got married. To who? Where did these mystery bitches come from? I like messing with Christians, but. Cause they easy to get, you can get on their skin quick, you know. <laughs> you know, I tell a Christian in a minute, I say, I don't believe Jesus died on no cross. Sacrilege. I said, well, wait a minute. He could walk on water, feed a thousand with a loaf of bread, raise the dead. But you telling me this nigga couldn't handle three nails. I know brothers with nine bullet wounds still walking around. 
His name is 50 Cent. You telling me 50 Cent colder than Jesus? Maybe you delusional motherfucker. I bet you Jesus was a cool kid. His mama be like, now Jesus, go on in there and take a bath and don't be walking on your water. That's probably why they invented the shower, just to get the nigga wet. Look at some of the Christian heads in here. You going to hell. <laughs> Don't be talking about Jesus, Eddie. Don't be talking about it. You know how Jesus whistled? <laughs> you know with the hole in the hand. <laughs> Look, y'all really like, nigga, that's it. The lightning's coming. <laughs> Christian always the first one want to send somebody to hell. You going to hell. How the fuck you know? Like God came down, uh, let that nigga know he's going to hell. I'm kind of busy right now. You know what I mean? I made my heavenly father's image. If I got a sense of humor, that means God got one. God probably up there cracking up right now. Hey, Jesus, come here. That crazy nigga I made his own. He talking about your boy. He said you walk on your back walk. He said you whistle like this. I don't get mad, nigga. That shit was funny. That shit was funny. <laughs> they always try to make God this uptight asshole motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, if you get some pussy, you going to hell. You made the pussy. Shouldn't have made it so motherfucking good. I mean, what kind of catch-22 is that? Here, Eddie, here's some pussy, but don't partake in it. <laughs> shit, nigga. See, I'd be a Muslim, but the Muslim faith, they too strict. You know what I mean? You can't smoke no weed. You can't get your dick sucked by a bitch that ain't your wife. Matter of fact, you can't see your wife's face until you marry her. They keep them veiled up. All you get to see is the eyes. You really got to love that bitch's eyes. You be like, damn, she got some pretty eyes. Then you marry her as the veil come off. Nah, 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 nah. No wonder they get 20 wives. You playing the law of averages. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think Christians are jealous of Muslims. Because you ain't going to out devout a Muslim. That's the most devout faith you ever run into. A Muslim will strap a bomb on themselves and blow themselves up about some Muhammad. Ask a Christian to put a bomb on and blow themselves up about Jesus. <laughs> no, he, he wouldn't want me to do that. He just blessed me with this house. I'm sure he wants me to live in it. Everybody fighting over this religious shit. You understand me? The Christians say Jesus is the messenger. The Muslims say it's Muhammad. I say, who gives a fuck who the messenger is? Did you get the message? They got the same damn message. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Science proves that to be a fact. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Don't fuck with me, and I won't fuck with you. So what is true? Nobody knows. It's individual to the individual's experience in life. Find your truth and stop running around with a book that says it's the truth and nothing else is. Because if you truly understand the entity known as God, Jehovah, Allah, whatever name you want to stick on 
it. The great IT never would be that big an asshole where he wouldn't understand his entire creation will always find his individual truth. Because he gave you that right to do so. It's called choice. That's what separates us from basic animals. A lion doesn't have a choice in a decision in being a lion, it's a lion. When it's hungry, it's gonna kill, it's gonna eat. After it eat, you can lay right next to that motherfucker. It ain't gonna hurt you. Because it's taking care of its basic nature. It doesn't have a choice. An insect is going to do what it is designed to do, programmed to do. So anybody that thinks this is not a master designer, all life has a program and how it works in the ecosystem. We're the only living entities on this planet that do not fit in the ecosystem. So if you're looking for an alien, look at the mirror. It's you. You don't fit in because you have a choice. You can manipulate your environment. Everything else is manipulated by its environment. A tree has to do photosynthesis. Otherwise, it's not a tree. We don't have to do a damn thing. There's only one thing we have to do. That's love. It is the moving force of the human race. What's the opposite of love? There's your devil. It ain't some invisible dude way down in hell running around. It's you. It's the duality of self. You have a God state, you got a devil state. Which one are you flexing? Are you flexing your God or are you flexing your devil? Sometimes the devil can be fun. Sometimes God can be boring. Sometimes God is fun. I bought my mama a house. I got my kids some clothes. Sometimes the devil get on your damn nerves. Why are you trying to shoot at me, nigga? What's wrong with you? So we have to figure out which part of our attributes are we flexing, God or the devil. That's why he said, I'm going to make man in my image. When you look in the mirror, did you not see your image? So who's God? All of us little miniature pieces of God hanging the fuck out with each other. Imagine me and God. Before the entire universe is created, imagine being all-knowing with nobody to share all this information with. What do you suffer from? Loneliness. So you blow yourself into a zillion parsecs, thus the ever-expanding universe. Science calls it the Big Bang. The Bible said what? In the beginning, let there be light. If all matter in the universe is at one point in space and it's so dense that you can fit it on the top of a pen, there's no light. Because the gravity's that great, so light can't escape it. Bow, you blow it up, gravity becomes less light can escape, let there be light. So science proves what God said, and the greatest scientist is God. You create this nice little planet called Earth and you paint yourself in this picture. Just like anybody that draws a picture of a boat on a lake and you paint yourself sitting on the lake with a fishing pole. Well, God painted himself in and called it mankind. You know what's called mankind? Same kind as me, only man in the flesh. That's why when Adam said, what should I call all the Adam, a- animals? God said, you me, you little motherfucker. Name them. I gave you everything, you know everything. He said don't eat from the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Why? It's called an overdose. If you already got eternal life and eternal knowledge, why would you eat more knowledge and more life? You OD'd. That's why we run around right now talking about what we know and how long we gonna live. We overdosed. I know that's one question, but 
you dealing with a deep motherfucker, so you know, let me go there.